Hey, Samantha, what's up? Hey, Dr. John, how are you? I'm rocking on, dude. What are you up to? You know, just have a lot on my mind, hence why the call. <laughs> Fantastic. What happened? Uh, I got into some deep trouble with my roommate, and um, I really need some advice. What's so, the trouble? I, about four months ago, got a new roommate. We have a 10-year age difference. He's uh, 25. I'm 35. Did you sleep I met with your too. roommate? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Amazing. I why Why mm. did you do that? And I had no idea. I'm dumb, and it was a really, really poor decision. We were both getting out of relationships right when he moved in. And I think that there was an unspoken attraction. We would always have dinner, hang out. Um, we just, for whatever reason, would spend hours after work talking and I think that there was always <laughs> a like mutual a, attraction. Like a, like, a, like a romance novel. And then kind of, one like, night the fire was in the fireplace. You're actually not really wrong because it got to a movie. <laughs> it was raining outside. I was going to go on a trip and I couldn't go. <gasps> oh my gosh. You're really not that off because there was one night <laughs> Not even a month into him moving in, we watch a movie together. We're being super flirtatious, and his bathroom tub was getting fixed, and he had to use my bathroom. And after the movie, we were being really flirtatious during the movie, like touching hands and flirting and blah, blah, blah. And he goes to me, what time should I come in your room to use the bathroom? And I was like, I said something, and I'm going to, it's going to sound really cringe right now, but I was like, you can come and use my bathroom anytime you want. And he was like, uh, he got really nervous. And he was like, wait, Samantha, what are we doing? Can we talk about the tension? And I was like, um, what tension? He was like, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Are we going to do something about it? Can we be adults and be casual and be essentially friends with benefits who live with, with each other? And I was like, um, this is weird. We have a 10 year age gap. We both are getting out of, just got out of relationships. I don't know. And he was like, let's try it. I go along with it. We hold on, hold on, hold on. (laughs) I was with you until you tried to sell me a, like a fresh box of of dog cha cha. (laughs) Like, and then I just went along with whatever you're in, you're in. So, like what? Yeah. Like what's the deal now? So you slept with your roommate. The whole thing's weird, right? The whole thing is really weird, and everything has been on his terms. Like everything has been like he will initiate things and like hang out and be like, let's, you know, hook up. But it's always been on his terms. And oh, wait, I wait, 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 wait. Why are you out? I don't understand that. I don't understand it either, and I feel really bad about it. And now he is not dating someone else, but he's seeing someone else. Like they're not exclusive or anything. And he just pulled the plug and that's fine. But I felt like he got what he wanted and kind of tossed me aside because we're not, we're not sleeping with each other anymore. And I feel very used and yes, yes. You should feel used because you were, and you used him. I didn't think of it that way. You absolutely used him. And vice versa. And this, like, there's no such thing. And and people can, oh my gosh, you're an idiot. There's just not. The 25, like, the way the friends with, it doesn't work. It never works. Mm -hmm. It, It always causes chaos. Either in the moment, short term, or downstream. Always. Always. And... He was really clear on the front end. And you were like, You're right. okay. You're right. Yeah, like, like, and, and, and <laughs> like, <sighs> did you get your heart broken? Did you fall for this kid? It's not that I fell for him. I mean, I, I'm not, and I, I lied to him. And I think I lied to myself and said that I, I'm okay with a casual fling and I'm not. Did you like this guy? I, yeah. I mean, I can't be intimate with someone if I don't like them. And I never told him that. No, you told him and, the exact opposite of that. 
I did. Yeah. And I think your anger or frustration or heartbreak or whatever is misplaced. I don't think it's on him. I think it's on you. Why? Because you were hoping to get something from this 25 year old kid. And I didn't. And you didn't. And you've done this before. Maybe not in, maybe not with the casual hookup, but you have gone after somebody else before to try to fill a void and it didn't work. Fair or not fair? Fair. Yeah, I, I didn't think of it that way. And I wanted to ask you if I should talk to him about how I felt or just kind of let it go. He's going to look at you and say, I laid out the ground rules of this, this thing. You're way more experienced than me about everything in life. You have a decade on me. You, not only, you initiated this. Um, when I just simply asked you if I could use your bathroom, you turned it into some sort of heightened sexual interaction. And I set the ground rules and you were like, cool. And I'm just following through the roadmap that I laid out. And you see what I'm saying? And anytime we try, anytime we try to use divorce the act of sex from something connective it, it's i mean it just ends and people get hurt it just does yeah and you i mean so you could talk to him i don't i don't know what i don't know what that's i don't know what telling me your feelings unless you're telling him i really like you and i want to be exclusive with you and hey we already moved in together i mean you know what i mean i don't know what, what do you want to tell him i think i wanted to tell him that i felt like everything had been on his terms. I don't even know. What does that even mean? I don't even know what that means. It means that anytime it like a hookup was initiated, like, Hey, let's like hook up and have sex, whatever. It was always on his terms. And anytime I would try to even after we had sex, after the fact, I'd be like, let's watch a movie or let's do this. He would automatically go to, I can't have sex tonight. I'm really stressed. I have a big business meeting in the morning. I can't do this. And I would automatically be like, I'm not asking you to have sex. That's not about him. That's about you. In what way? If there was a power dynamic to where you were found yourself trapped Mm -hmm. or caught or forced, then things are on their terms. If you agree to an employment arrangement where you go work for a boss and that boss says you will be here at eight o'clock and you will leave at five, then your work day is on their terms because there's a power differential there. Yeah. This is just a guy who doesn't really care or was really clear at the outset. This is all this is going to be. And you were like, cool. Any time. And then you want to turn it into something else as like an unfair relationship, right? And I guess I guess there's an, there's another on terms with like, I've been married to the same person for more than two decades now. Yeah. Yes, it can be always on my terms if I start to take advantage of her. So that's another place where um, relationship could, without a power differential, right? Because we are... We're, we're co-creating this marriage, me and my wife. And so, yeah, I could try to, I could take advantage of her kindness, of her, what, fill in the blank, anything. And it can always be on my terms. But I think Mm. you're mad that you kept signing up for this thing and you kept going and you kept going and your guts knew it wasn't right and your heart knew it wasn't right and you kept doing it and you kept doing it and you kept doing it. Yeah, I didn't think of it that way. And that's probably something I should have thought of. And I wasn't honest with him or myself. I, I'm, I mean, way I'm, more, I'm way more I'm way more worried about your honesty with you. Yeah. I mean, I can be very outspoken and bold with what I want. And I am a lot of the times, but sometimes like this with Eric, I... I will be compliant and then be like, all right, well, maybe we'll see where it goes and maybe something else will develop. And I won't say anything because I don't want to off the bat 
come across as like wanting a relationship and why 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 won't you just say what you want i should have well now it's too late and i don't even think i would want to be with a 25 year old i'm you were with a 25 year old both physically and emotionally you were with him he didn't choose you and that broke your heart yeah you were with him you live in this in this like I'm bold when it you're bold when it doesn't count. You're bold at work, and that mm-hmm. doesn't it doesn't matter. Mm. You can like you know what I mean. Like you can be loud and like I get what I want at the office. Cool, man. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Where it counts is looking across from somebody and saying, "Here is all I am. Do you love me?" <laughs> and when it counts, you get real quiet and say. I'll just take whatever because that's all I think I'm worth. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what happened with my last relationship. I bet it, you could go look at a pattern because somewhere along the way, you got a message that when it comes to vulnerability, you better freaking not show any. When it comes to connection, just take what you can get because that's about all you're worth. And I'm telling you, you're worth more than that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely dived into this, and I, you I know, know, I, I know, but you home. keep you can dive in all you want, but you keep doing and, it. Yeah, I do for sure. I mean, that's literally what happened in my last relationship, and it got to a point where I had enough, and I finally walked away. But it took me a, a while to get there, a long time, longer than it should have. Yes, and I think you're there too. If you were my friend, like just a buddy of mine, I would say you hmm. got it's you got to move out. Or if he's really, yes. Unless you want to just see a walking example about how you let yourself down as he parades girlfriends in and out of there. As you spent like, it's like a real life social media account. Why would you do that to yourself? I, I mean, outside of this, we have opposite opposite schedules, and he's not really <clears throat> home a lot, and I'm not, so it's a this really. This is good... not a math problem. <sighs> this is a Samantha's heart challenge. Yeah. Like I'm saying this not in a flippant, like stitch on a pillow kind of way. Mm-hmm. I'm saying this like if you were standing here, I would ask you, is this okay? And hopefully you would say yes. And I'd put both my hands on the side of your face and I'd look you in the eyes and I'd tell you, you're worth so much more than this. So he didn't do anything wrong. It's pretty much no, I... No, I didn't say that. If he was 25 years old, I would tell him, who does he think he is? But he's not on the phone with me right now. And what you try to do, this is your game, is you toggle back and forth so hard so that you don't have to sit with any discomfort. Of course he has culpability and responsibility in this. I'm not blaming him. I'm not blaming you for everything. I'm saying you started it. You're 10 years older than he is. You've got more experience than he is. You invited it. And then when it comes down to like the brass tacks of consent, you went along with it every single time. And I didn't speak up for myself. That's what I'm saying. You're worth more than this. Thank You're worth you. more than flirty hookups with a 25 year old kid who happens to be a roommate. You're worth more than like flexing around the office, but just accepting relationships, man. It should be the opposite way around. Yeah, I, I'm glad that I, I called in and called you because I didn't even think of it like that. I kind of was looking at it from the opposite end and resenting him, but not even looking at what I was allowing. And by the way, if you if you get to where you're resenting the person that you're sharing a, a living space with, have him leave or you leave. Why would you live like that? Yeah. Like, listen, when you walk out of the office, the office is hard. And I'm, making, I'm flipping about it, right? Like, I fight, we fight hard here at my office, a lot. And it gets loud and people disagree. 
and lots of opinions and egos. Okay. And I also love these people too. And we disagree. Like I, so, but here's the thing. My home has to be the place of peace. Mm. It has to be the one place I drop my shoulders and I can go, I've got there. And I think much of the mental health challenges in the country right now are our homes are as electric and not safe and not peaceful as our workplace, as the subway, as the traffic jam, as the news feeds coming in our little phones. And our whole world are electric. Yeah. And our homes have to be a place where we walk in and go, but I'm here now and now I'm safe. And so, dude, if you resent this kid, make a hard call and move on with your life, dude. It's not worth the roommate. It's not worth the the, the shared rent. Your peace is not. What's the price of peace in your house? You're right. I I didn't think of it that way. I'm like, I was just like, oh, we have opposite schedules. <laughs> no, right. dude, that guy will haunt you and because he'll just be a visual representation. Of another time, Sam didn't lean into her true value, her true worth. And didn't vocalize what I wanted. Right. And wouldn't vocalize what I won't accept. And if, mm. I, if I go along with this, if I go along with it, if I go along with it, maybe. See how you're trying to reverse engineer, you're trying to work backwards to vulnerability. Yeah. Maybe if I do some things, if I'm, if I'm a part of some things, an unbalanced relationship where someone's clearly taking advantage of me, if I go this way, maybe then I'll get that relationship that I want. And that's just not the path. No. And you're right. It's, it's exactly what I was thinking. And I was like, I never just want to... Okay, so... For me, a lot of it is like things will naturally happen sometimes. I, in relationships and jobs, sometimes the job will come or the relationship will come when you least expect it. I didn't want to go into it being like, this is exactly what it needs to be and this is what I want. And I just was like, that's too intense. So I'm like, let's just see where it goes and um, let things naturally occur and progress. So that's where I think my head was at. I once had a buddy who was the um, dean of a business college hmm. and he was meeting with me and my staff. I'd invite him to come talk to our staff and he said something that changed my life. He said, we spend so much time planning, setting value statements, strategic plans, five-year goals, board reports, finance reports, quarterly reports for our jobs. And he looked at that group and he said, and none of it matters. And then we go home to our kids, our wives, our husbands, our boyfriends, our girlfriends. And we just hope that happens. Or as you put it, to see where it goes. And if you're not intentional about your values, if you're not intentional about what matters to you, if you're not intentional about where you want to go and you label yourself as too intense, I reject that. You're not too intense. You're not intentional enough. Where it's going to always go is where it's always gone. And for you, that's heartbreak. Yeah, it has. And so at least give your heart as much respect as you give your dumb job. As you gave grad school, as you gave undergrad, that level of intentionality. I'm not like that with my career. I'm like booming with my career. I know you are. I know you are. Because somewhere yeah. along the way, somebody told you that's the path to value. You'll finally be worth something if you get that plaque on the wall. And what sucks for you is you got that plaque a bunch. You keep getting another one and another one and another one and another one. And it never fills that gap. Why? Because wherever you go, you go with you. And you, Sam, don't think you have value. You don't think you're worth being loved. You don't think you're worth saying out loud, this is what I want and this is what I need. 
And I'm not going to go along with some 25-year-old who just wants to hook up. I'm not. And I'm going to be all into this flirty, like, eh, culture. Like, eh, I'm going to get all close and be like, you know, like, yeah. Because I don't have the courage here, like I do at my office. I don't have the courage here to say, this is what I believe. This is what I'm worth. And when it comes to intimacy, when it comes to romance, when it comes to building something down the line in the future with somebody, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw boundaries and I'm going to have my standards. If no one's ever told you you're worth that, Sam, I'm sorry. It breaks my heart for you. But you are. You're worth every bit of that and more. But don't go home to a place that you resent. Don't go home to a person you resent. Make your house a place of peace so that you can begin to anchor in and say, what do I believe? What do I value? Who am I going to be? And then go be that person. And who cares what some 25-year-old, 35-year-old, 45-year-old person thinks? You're worth all that.